If you subscribe to this channel, there's a good chance you've seen this video about this ultra silent air compressor. It's time for an upgrade. We're gonna upgrade to this 15 gallon tank. We're gonna take a look at some of the mods that I've done to the compressor since I've built it. And the whole reason I'm building this is so that I can build a bigger pressure tank for resin casting. So let's go ahead and upgrade this bad boy. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Don't forget to check out the design and making merch just below the video on the shelf. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, leggings, and phone cases. I had been searching for a long time for a 15 gallon vertical air compressor and I finally found one on Craigslist and I bought that locally for about 30 bucks. In this video, I'm gonna cover basically tearing down this compressor. We're gonna try to use whatever parts that we can. I kept everything intact without hacking it up because I didn't know what I was gonna use. And we're going to basically take the old compressor and put it on top of this thing. This is what the motor looks like on one of these things. Pretty cheap, nothing special. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up the tank. We're gonna take the old graphics off and we're gonna put on some new ones. I wanna let you know that at the end of this video, I'm gonna address something that is asked all the time. It's like how loud this compressor actually is. And I'm gonna have some actual footage of that so you can hear that. We're gonna put it on some bots and design graphics, and of course, it needs a Motorhead final sticker as well. So, the number one thing, of course, is getting the compressor onto this tank, and we're gonna need an adapter plate to do that, and I make one out of cardboard there really quick, and we're gonna make that ultimately out of steel. I got a piece of steel here, it's pretty thick, and we lay out some primer on it, and we're just gonna laser etch what we're going to cut out of that steel onto the spray paint. So much easier to just lay it out on the laser and then cut it out. So I have access to some amazing equipment where I teach and this is a shear and so we're just shearing down this piece to the right size and you know gotta have sheet metal porn. Yeah baby. All right, we'll cut the corners and round them off a little bit here. I believe this is a, called a throated shear. We'll take that over to the sander and we'll sand off those edges or those corners. Nice. I make sure to keep my hands away from the disc since I'm wearing gloves. I don't want to hear about it in the comments. And we're going to drill the holes with the drill press. You notice there's a piece of wood underneath of it so that we can drill a nice clean hole through the sheet metal. And then I use a stepper bit here to drill the bigger hole. Uh, and this is actually for the cabling. And we'll also use this step bit to, on the back side of the sheet metal, just to deburr the holes if there's anything, uh, you know, sticking out to make them nice and clean. And all right, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications. Another thing we're gonna cover in this video is how much oil this compressor loses, if it loses any oil at all, and some of the other things that I didn't quite do correct on the first build that I'm gonna address in this one. So we're gonna go here to the brake and we're gonna fold the bracket. Now. One of the bummers about that machine is that it didn't have a small enough uh, flange for me to bend the second one. So I needed to do this kind of old school. I heat it up with a rosebud tip here and then just fold it over. So not the cleanest break ever, but uh, it's gonna get me what I want. Now, on the tank, we need to be able to mount that bracket. So we're gonna drill a couple of holes on the top and uh, I'm gonna thread them using a five millimeter uh, socket cap uh, screw here. <laughs> and uh, so it's just super easy. Now, because I couldn't break uh, or fold the sheet metal the way I wanted, I got a little bit more play in my uh, piece uh, with that 
bend, I need to just widen these openings where the bracket gets mounted onto the top of the tank. You know, you use the tools that you got and you make the best of it uh, with the time that you have allotted. So I needed a little bit of adjustment there. I couldn't make it quite the way I wanted to. We're gonna come back and throw some primer down on this uh, adapter plate here. So thin, light coats, build them up, same as you're gonna do with the final paint. I'm using a semi-gloss black here. So light strokes, you don't wanna glom on that paint. Let it dry in between coats, build it up get a nice finish on there so you don't get any runs or drips or anything just take your time all right so this is the old compressor many of you may re uh, recognize that and we're going to take that apart the first thing we're going to take off is the silencer and i'm going to address that as well in this video because i really don't cover that very much in the other video so we're going to disassemble this tank take all the components apart so we can transfer them onto the other one those are the electronics now we're gonna lift off the compressor here. There you go. And there's the old adapter plate that we had to build to get it to adapt to the uh, old six gallon tank. That's the uh, pressure switch right there. And let's remove that. Now, two years of water in the bottom of this tank, filling up this cup, that's amazing. The drainage hole was not on the bottom bottom of that tank, rather a little bit on the side, and I had a pressure relief valve there. And uh, it didn't cause me any issues, it's brass, but the water certainly built up in the tank over time, and so uh, that's probably the biggest enemy here. Now, a lot of people ask, oh, you're losing oil out of the compressor, blah, not the case. I pretty much had exactly the same amount of oil in that compressor as what I put in when I did it originally. Uh, so I dumped it out and I checked the old video where the level of the oil was in that same cup and we put it back in here into the compressor changing the oil it's about 175 milliliters next we're gonna put on the electrical outlet which is how we're gonna plug in the compressor in the end I, that's from an old server PC case I'm gonna bolt the compressor onto the adapter plate so that we can put it onto the new 15 gallon tank. Here we go. As you're watching me bolt down the uh, compressor onto the tank, I just wanna talk a little bit more about that water that came out of the bottom of the old tank. There was minimal oil in that water. So all of you are talking about these compressors that spit out oil. I'm not seeing any of that in my compressor. I guess it depends on the compressor you're using, but I had no issue with that. I am removing the old uh, supply tube that came from the compressor that went to the tank. And that is swedged at the top there, basically flared out so that it would fit onto the compressor. And I'm gonna end up reusing a little piece of that. So let's start putting some of the uh, exhaust or the out uh, manifold stuff onto the tank. This is basically that once the air is in the tank, this is where the air comes out. I have added an additional cross uh, or four-sided uh, connector there so that I can expand in the future and put my pressure relief valve in a place where it actually belongs. Here I am attaching the pressure tank gauge at the top there and now the pressure regulator. And this is something that I've upgraded over time from the old tank. The original pressure regulator just wasn't uh, fine enough and it wasn't uh, stable and I wasn't able to get the pressure that I wanted. So I purchased this one on eBay. It's certainly a little overkill for this unit, but it is very precise. This is the pressure on and off shutoff valve. This is what turns the compressor on and off to fill the tank. That mechanical switch is literally a switch that uh, allows current to flow to the capacitor, which is what I have in my hand. The original capacitor lasted about a month, and so this is an aftermarket unit. Much, much bigger capacitor allows the uh, compressor to turn on and off without any issues and I haven't had any any problems with it. It's, not a, it's rather unsightly, but uh, it works flawlessly. 
Now, one of the things that I'm reusing from this tank is the one-way pressure valve that you can see just behind my hand that's moving back and forth there and this copper tubing. The reason I'm reusing this uh, one-way pressure valve is that it's much more compact than what I had before. The bummer about it is that it's metric for whatever reason. It's got an eight millimeter tube and I ended up needing to buy on eBay some compression fitting, an eight millimeter compression fitting, which I uh, custom ordered from uh, eBay, who knows where it came from. And I'm using the old little copper adapter piece here, which I'm just cutting off with a hacksaw. So this one end is gonna slip over the compressor and the eight millimeter tube is actually going to slide inside of that piece and become my adapter tube so that I can re-solder it onto the compressor and then uh, attach it here onto the one-way check valve. So this is something that I'm reusing from this compressor itself even though it's a little bit of an oddball piece. Here you can see that little adapter copper plate that I made for this tube. And I'm going to solder that onto the compressor. The other end is not going to get soldered because I don't want to mess up that one-way valve. I don't know uh, what it's made of, and there's probably a plastic or a flexible rubber piece in there. So we'll add a little bit of, oh uh, man, what's that stuff called? Flux, so that we can solder that together. And uh, then we'll heat that up with a torch. Here we go, a little bit of solder doesn't take very much it flows right in there super easy and we're done let's take a quick look at that solder connection pretty clean doesn't take very much you want to be careful when you're soldering on your compressor so you don't loosen anything up now on the other side I do put a little bit of Teflon tape on that compression nut that little olive that goes on there I'm sorry I don't have any better footage of that so I was having a little problem with those uh, compression nuts leaking and something I found on YouTube where people were putting Teflon tape around the compression nut to seal them to get them to seal correctly because I want to use this piece this uh, one-way check valve fits this thing and uh, part of the unit now let's address the silencer this is what makes the compressor ultra quiet. Uh, so it's pretty loud without the muffler on it. And you can see as soon as I put that can back on there, and that's an old shaving can, and inside of that can is filled with brass wool and then uh, a little piece of foam on the end. Basically the same way you would build a silencer for a gun. Uh, yes, boys and girls, that's how silencers are made. They basically have a sound absorbing material on the inside of it. And you can see when I pull the microphone away from there, it's, it's quiet. That compressor is not loud. So, new compressor tank, 15 gallons, should be plenty for my uh, new pressure tank that I'm building. Hope you love this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, continue to follow me. I love the support. I totally appreciate it. And I hope you like this compressor upgrade video. Hope you build your own. Post in the forum down below if you do. Good luck. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the bottom right of the video or below the video. Give it a thumbs up and follow the channel there as well. Hey, and don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook sometimes, Twitter usually, and now Instagram. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.